This church leader tool is on the topic of how to share your faith. I recently came across some research which indicated that church leaders know that one of the most important tasks that they have is how to help others share their faith. And yet at the same time, church leaders often feel that they don't have the skills to properly help folks do this. And so when I, when I came across this information, I thought, well, let's go ahead and create a church leader tool on how to share your faith. And this tool could be used in two specific ways. The first is just to play this video and to conduct these exercises with a group. The second way it could be used is I will provide in the resources section this PowerPoint and you are welcome to download it and teach it yourself, modify it and use it in whichever way you want to use. There's also a Word handout, also PDF, uh, that you can use to hand that out and modify that as well for your particular uh, context and your personality. So whether you play this video for somebody else or go ahead and teach it yourself, I hope that it's a blessing. So let's go ahead and start with why share your faith. Just a little bit of scripture in this respect. It's pretty easy to look at John 3.16 that Jesus Christ died for the world and that message needs to be shared. We need to know how to share that so that others come to know what we know that God loves us, that that's why Jesus died for us. Uh, really, this was a command from Jesus. At the end of his ministry, in each of the Gospels, there's a very clear description that we are to go and share this. Matthew is the most clear of all of them. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. So this is something that Jesus calls us to do. It's like what Paul describes in Roman the 10th chapter, that the way people primarily come to know about faith is that somebody shares that with them. When we look at the faith that we have, it was passed down to us by previous generations. So we have the responsibility to hand it down to future generations, just as it was passed on to us. So a couple basic sharing skills that will help us in how to share our faith. First, recognize that relationships matter. We will have a larger impact on people that we have a closer relationship with. The, the guy standing on the soapbox at the corner may influence some people, but it is more likely that you will influence friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, people you have a deeper relationship with as you share your faith with them. Also, remember, be yourself. Speak from the heart. Be who you are supposed to be. That's what a relationship brings you, just an authentic sense of who you are. So you don't have to memorize anything special, a theology, a, an argument, uh, multiple passages of scripture. Just be yourself. Speak from the heart and tell your story. Somebody can argue scripture or argue uh, some way of convincing in faith that you might describe. It's very hard to argue with your authentic story. It's what God has given you. It's who you are. If you have some argument, the four laws or whatever that you're trying to express to somebody, people may disagree with that. But if you're just telling them the way you've experienced Jesus and God in your life, they can't really say, well, no, you haven't experienced it that way. It's just what God has given you. So just kind of share your own story with other folks. Also remember your actions need to be consistent with your words. Now, I don't think it's enough just to have actions. We do need to speak out loud our faith and share that with others. But if our actions aren't consistent, people will notice that. In the opposite direction, if our actions clearly express the faith that is in us, then our actions will reinforce the words that we share about faith. Also remember to listen to their story. I know folks who have been deeply hurt by Christian leaders or churches or even have had problems with God and listen to the journey that they've had and understand that a little bit. Um, it will go a long way toward helping somebody grow in faith to just hear their story and why they may have some challenges and some difficulties with faith. 
And then finally, be patient. This is a process. You don't need to convince or win somebody over in one conversation. Simply be patient and know that you're planting seeds and planting ideas and that the process will unfold as God desires in that person and in in your life as well. So what I want to do now is offer some sharing exercises. What is best done is in a group or even just two folks, think about the question, give it a little bit of thought, and then express it out loud to somebody else. Say out loud what you might have never done, and you do that for the other person, and then listen as they do the same. And there's great power in this because having spoken out loud some simple questions of faith, then you are more ready to share that when God gives you the opportunity. In fact, I've found when folks have engaged in some simple faith questions, then they find that they have those opportunities much more frequently. So again, these are just some simple exercises. So the first of those is to just think about and then share out loud with somebody else, what about God or Jesus' story impacts you? So for some folks, the creation and the marvel of our bodies and the the complexities of the world around us are amazing. For other folks, it may be a script, a scripture passage from the Old Testament or from the New Testament. It might be Jesus' sacrifice on the cross or other parts of scripture that is particularly meaningful to you. So simply think about that and then share that with somebody else. What about God or Jesus' story impacts you? So that's the first exercise. A second exercise is to answer the question, why are you a Christian? Just imagine somebody asking you, why are you a Christian? And then give an answer and and say this out loud. I would highlight, by the way, that this question could be rephrased from a question by Adam Hamilton, who asks three excellent questions in his book, Leading Beyond the Walls. The first question that he poses is, why do people need Christ? He says, that's a question we need to be able to answer. And so in answering, why are you a Christian? You're really partly answering that question. So it's just another way to think about it. So we've got two exercises. What about God or Jesus' story impacts you? And why are you a Christian? A third one, why do you attend church? You know, what is it about church that blesses you? Why why, why do you attend? Again, it is something that sometimes comes up in conversation. And when you prepare your answer to this, you have more opportunities because it's fresh in your mind to share that with somebody else. Uh, To go to Adam Hamilton's question, he asked the question, why do people need the church? Okay, if we can say, well, why people need Christ, then why do they need the church? If we can't answer that question, we can just pack up, sell the property and go on home. But my guess is you probably have an answer. Why do you attend church? And then a fourth exercise is why do you attend this church? Why is this particular congregation a blessing to you and to the community? Adam Hamilton's question in this regard is why do they need our church? You know, what is it specifically about our church that has value? Again, if we can't answer that, sell the property, pack up, go on home. But I'm guessing you probably have an answer. Why do you attend this church? So I hope that this little bit of teaching and these exercises are helpful. Uh, I want to end with one other passage of scripture, which is a great reminder of 1 Peter, the third chapter. We hear, always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. We want to have the answers to these questions so we are ready. And then Peter reminds us, yet do it, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. We want to share these things with gentleness and reverence, and they will have impact for other people. So as I usually end these church leader tools, please think about who you can share this with. This is not a tool just for you to listen and absorb yourself, but share it with some other folks, either as I suggested in this video form, maybe just pausing the video uh, at the specific questions and then continuing on, or download the video, download the document, and go ahead and teach it yourself so that others will know how to share their faith. 
Take care and God bless.